Welcome to this new episode of The Context. My name is David Orban, and I will be talking to you about jolting technologies. There is a paradigm shift moving from accelerating technological change to jolting technological change. What is a jolt? Technically, the jolt is the measure of the rate of change of acceleration. Mathematically, it is the third derivative of position. The first derivative is velocity as a vector or speed as an absolute measure. The second derivative is acceleration and the third derivative is jolt. Let me give you immediately a couple of examples to show that uh, this is not just uh, abstract and useless uh, in terms of wanting to go further and uh, dealing with quantities that have nothing to do with our uh, world but live in mathematical abstraction. The first example is that of a variable acceleration. Imagine a rocket. The engines are at full thrust as it ascends. But contrary to many other forms of transportation, the rocket brings on board both uh, its uh, uh, propellant and its oxidant, and as they chemically combine the exhaust gas based on the third law of Newton, gives the reaction that accelerates the rocket. However, what happens is that this acceleration is proportional to actually the mass of the rocket. It would be also proportional to the force, but we said that the engine is at maximum power, so it will be constant. And as the rocket consumes its propellant and oxidant combining and expelling them, its mass will diminish and the diminishing mass will lead to an increasing acceleration during the ascent. Of course, this is just an example, and there are other factors to consider as well. For example, the diminishing um, uh, force exercised by the atmosphere uh, as a if you go higher and higher altitudes, there is less and less air. And uh, as a consequence, uh, the rocket will have an easier and easier time uh, ascending due to that too. Here is another example. In this case of a variable rate of deceleration. Imagine you are in your car and you are going not too fast, but maybe just a little bit too fast. And a pedestrian steps off the curb in front of you. And as you brake in order to stop and not to hit the pedestrian, after a few um, seconds or a fraction of a second, you realize that you must brake harder. And as you step on the brakes, your rate of deceleration increases in order to be able to stop in time. And this will bring your car to a jolting halt. As a matter of fact, uh, in the various legal and contractual uh, frameworks surrounding public transportation, there is a concept of jolt and jerk. Uh, jerk is a synonym of uh, jolt. It may even be more frequently used. If you look up jolt in uh, Wikipedia, it will automatically redirect you to the article talking about jerk. However, as I was designing this episode, I decided that I couldn't talk to you about jerking technologies. So from now on, we will be talking about jolt and jolting technologies only. So when the bus 
uh, lurches and moves uh, and uh, stops and starts, it is fundamental for uh, the bus driver uh, to drive as smoothly as possible rather than jolting and jerking and uh, potentially causing damage to uh, the passengers, even without necessarily uh, an accident because our skeleton and our muscles need to adapt uh, to the new speed or, in this case, to the new acceleration that must be reached very, very progressively. So I hope these two examples clarify the fact that when we are talking about jolt, it is a natural phenomenon that happens that variable accelerations occur and we need to take them into account. In this series, I often talk about accelerating technological change in various areas. And as a matter of fact, the uh, exponential technologies uh, that uh, we analyze and teach at Singularity University, uh, for example, are at the basis of so many things that happen in the world today that we must thrive to understand them. Technology creates change. And over the course of centuries, if you <clears throat> observe this change, you may think that change is constant. But in reality, what happens is that almost imperceptibly, the speed of technological change as it accumulates increases. That is why we are talking about accelerating technologies. And if at the beginning you couldn't realize that this is what was happening, after a while, it becomes evident. And more and more people embrace uh, the paradigm that there is an accelerating uh, 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 technological change and that it impacts business and society the way we live. To the point where if for some reason in some area this acceleration doesn't keep up with our expectations, we are let down. We will say things like, oh my God, the new um, mobile phone just announced um, is not as big a change as we thought. It is just an incremental change. Incremental change doesn't satisfy our expectations anymore. So what happens with jolting technologies where the rate of acceleration itself is increasing. Do jolting technologies actually exist? Can we uh, think about them, that jolting technologies will be here and they may influence, overwhelm, or really just disrupt what merely accelerating technologies are doing. So if we think about the feature of accelerating technologies that compared to linear phenomena, they may be incubating for a long time before becoming evident and disrupting the, the status quo, actually with jolting technologies, this can be even longer or the impact of jolting technologies for quite some time can be even less discernible, even harder to uh, latch on or to believe that, that it is real. But then when they go beyond the given threshold, their effect is even more dramatic, even more disruptive, even more explosive. So, in order to convince you that jolting technologies are real, let me give you several examples 
that this is already happening in computation, communication, cognition, transportation, biology, and elsewhere. Before giving you uh, those examples, though, let me uh, talk about a, a little bit more about the mathematical representation because it is going to be this mathematical representation that is going to lead to the model through which to analyze certain technologies and make falsifiable predictions that will demonstrate scientifically that the approach and the model are valid and useful, and that potentially will lead to applications in business, applications in technology management, and, and so on. So the mathematical formula for accelerating technologies uh, is the exponential function. For example, 2 to the power of x. And exponentials are often shown graphically as a line on a logarithmic chart. For a given unit of time, the value measured and represented uh, is going to increase an order of magnitude. On a logarithmic chart, what we have is uh, the time typically represented uh, in uh, the horizontal axis, one year, two years, three years, four years. And on the vertical axis, we will have some kind of value. For example, very famously, Moore's law saying that the number of transistors that we can cram on a given area of an integrated circuit is going to double for uh, every uh, 18 months approximately. So on the vertical uh, axis of an exponential um, phenomenon, as it is represented on a logarithmic chart, we will have 1, 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, and so forth. And when you plot uh, the transistor count of chips, over the course of 20, 30, 40, 50 years, which is uh, uh, the amount of time that we've known uh, about Moore's Law, this self-fulfilling prophecy uh, of engineers worldwide trying to prove it true, you will find that with deviations, obviously, statistically, here and there, uh, but you will be able to correctly plot or interpolate uh, the chips with their transistor densities and transistor counts um, on, a, on a line on this chart. The mathematical formula for jolting technologies is super exponential, such as 2 to the second to x. And when we represent this, graphically, on a logarithmic chart, we will have an exponential curve. This is just a visual aid, but it is also a tool for verifying if certain hypotheses about jolting technologies can be interpolated, and as a consequence, if we can make certain forecasts about their rate of uh, growth for the future. What would happen, what we would need to be able to observe, is that for every unit of time, the value that we are predicting for a jolting technology will increase an increasing value. Now, we are barely prepared to cope with exponential technologies. Famously, um, successful companies ran by extremely professional and well-prepared CEOs 
were led to ignore competitors that at the time didn't appear to be representing a menace to the leadership of that industry and uh, unseating the, the leading company, but then uh, they've proven to be formidable competitors, pushed ahead and sustained by the exponential technologies that they were driving. And the former leaders could do practically nothing. And they succumbed and they were eliminated. The failure of Kodak of uh, predicting the um, success of uh, digital cameras, both technologically as well as uh, the various use cases that would put them in the hands of billions of people, the failure of uh, Blockbuster predicting uh, the success of Netflix uh, uh, that would uh, lead to uh, their going bankrupt for both of these companies, uh, as a matter of fact. Well, if that is the case, I think it is safe to say that we are completely unprepared, desperately unprepared to face the explosive changes that jolting technologies uh, are going to bring. And the statistical variations, of course, that can happen uh, where uh, the various forces at play uh, contribute to um, these concrete examples uh, that we are analyzing not to be exactly on uh, those predicted paths of development, but being uh, uh, outperforming or underperforming them, uh, these variations are going to be uh, really uh, dramatic. If you hated uh, the stock market flash crash that happened uh, um, uh, a decade ago or, or, or so, then wait until uh, the world is going to be dominated by jolting technologies. But that is exactly why it is so urgent that we develop a series of methodologies that allow us to cope with the consequences of jolting technologies defining our world. Because the way that we understand the world will be profoundly uh, impacted by them, and the world itself, the reality on the ground. How far is our image already, oftentimes, of an African country, an African city? How far is uh, the image we have of China or, or of uh, other countries? How many <laughs> New Yorkers driving uh, the crumbling subway daily have experienced the science fiction grade subway in Beijing or Shanghai. Just a tiny fraction. They don't realize how out of sync their worldview is from reality. And as jolting technologies are going to be unevenly adopted uh, in various parts of the world, there will be truly areas that embrace science fiction fully and other areas of the planet that stay behind, maybe not even realizing or uncomprehending and disbelieving because the changes are not just going to be of a trash-filled, smelly, crumbling subway uh, in the world finance capital that is so proud of its uh, role compared to a shiny, reliable, fast uh, system on the other side of the world, but the differences will be even more dramatic of what it is going to be to be human, what is the biological basis of being human, what are the applications of AI or nanotechnology that society is able to support and to absorb? Who is going to 
make our species interplanetary, who is going to explore the universe? So let me give you, in closing, a few rapid series of jolting technologies as examples to show you that this is real, that this is happening. Quantum computing. And you will say, well, where, where, where is com quantum computing? And you would be right. Quantum computing is not still here, but that is kind of exactly the point. The first time I used quantum computers, and this deserves, uh, of course, as a technology, but also as an anecdote, a separate episode of the context, was 10 years ago. And it's not that things uh, have been dramatically transformed since, but jolting technologies incubate imperceptibly for a long time, a longer time than uh, merely exponential technologies. And they will be more dramatic. Why is this the case with the quantum computers? Because the components of quantum computers obey Moore's law. But the way that quantum computers are able to leverage their components is exponential. So there is an exponential substrate supporting exponential software. And that is why the consequence of the combined effect is super exponential. Second example, gene sequencing. We have been showing, I have been showing in my conferences, charts of the decreasing cost of gene sequencing over the course of many years. And this chart would show uh, a, a line in a logarithmic chart showing that uh, rather than um, $3 billion uh, 15 years ago, the cost of a um, complete gene sequencing uh, is 3 million and then 3,000. Not even that. Uh, rather than the decrease being merely exponential, the decrease is super exponential. The decrease is jolting. In the last few years, quite interestingly, this acceleration in the power of gene sequencing and the deceleration uh, in the cost, the dramatically dropping cost, actually jolting acceleration and jolting deceleration in the cost slowed down. Now it is merely exponential. And the reason is because the patents in the gene sequencing machines are about to expire. So rather than respecting their clients and respecting the market forces, the holders of those patents are saying, oh my God, this is uh, going um, to disappear. We are not going to be able to extract from the market these juicy uh, royalties and these juicy charges that we have been doing in the past several years. So let's milk it for these last few years. Let's milk it as much as we can even if uh, with this disrespect for the market forces, probably we are alienating uh, the ecosystem participants that realize that we are taking advantage of them. It doesn't matter because now we are protagonists, we are leaders, but we are not going to be anymore when our patents expire, everybody else is gonna jump into the market. So let's ride it out until the going is good. After these two examples of concrete technologies that uh, represent jolting technologies today, let me give you a few predictions. What I expect of other technologies to have these jolting characteristics. One of them is in communications where the deployment of generation after generation after generation of communication technologies brought in more and more people. And each of these has observed uh, an exponential growth. Uh, each of them has been able to capture more and more orders of magnitude of people. But the, but the um, interpolation, uh, the cumulative uh, chart that you can 
design of the generations of communications technologies is designing a super exponential. And the next uh, generation, the fifth G uh, networks, 5G networks, as well as the simultaneous deployment of low Earth orbit uh, swarms of satellites for communications that SpaceX and, and, and Google and Facebook and many others are simultaneously trying to, um, to uh, both launch as well as start uh, operating in the next uh, uh, handful of years is going to represent that uh, jolting disruption uh, as uh, there will be a deluge of options of gigabit per second and more uh, communication options for everybody uh, on the planet. Another um, technology that I expect will have this kind of jolting effect uh, is the deployment of self-driving electric cars. Uh, after uh, the um, combustion engine's success over the course of the 20th uh, century, uh, with now battery technology and computing technology being able to uh, deliver uh, the performance that we want, uh, a real paradigm shift is going to happen and it is going to have a jolting effect on the industry. What is going to be this jolting effect? In my prediction, every car company that is not already uh, fully believing and already investing tens of billions of dollars in the development of self-driving electric cars is going to go bankrupt. Last example, artificial intelligence, neural networks, deep learning and other technologies being applied not only to real world challenges, which is absolutely fine and necessary, but artificial intelligence designing AI systems with, with these various approaches and others that will emerge. And of course, quantum computing also having to do with all of it. The lurking of AI performance that has been quite dramatically in the news uh, because of its exponential power is going to shift into this jolting metaphor. And AI systems being able to design AI systems without at all the necessity of it becoming conscious and wanting to kill humanity or pretending to have human rights or being able to solve universal problems uh, under the artificial general intelligence paradigm without all of that is going to already represent a jolting technology with huge disrupting force. Do we need all of these predictions to come true? Do we need all of these technologies to actually obey uh, my expectation of uh, this new metaphor, this new approach, this new methodology needed to understand them, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if some of them will be merely exponential uh, and not all of them proving to be jolting technologies. But as some of them will be, our world is going to be transformed. Now, you may think, well, actually, let's pretend I'm joking. Not about what I just said, but what, about, uh, what I am about to say right now. Let's pretend I'm joking. Because jouncing technologies are the ones with a variable rate of jolt. Jouncing technologies, and I'm not going to cover them anymore in this episode of the context, are naturally post-singularitarian. We need 
advanced jerking and jolting technologies to understand them. Should we care about the power of jolting technologies today? Maybe. But if that is true, it will be for a new episode of The Context. So thank you very much for listening and watching this until the end. I truly appreciate your attention. And if you want, you can become a supporter on Patreon and help me and my team with as little as $5 a month or even less if you find the option because uh, that is just a suggested amount and you can become a supporter with any amount to produce more episodes uh, of the context and to create the future together.